Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I'm still here at Nordic Computers and they have been nice enough to let me show some of their equipment. They have lots of equipment so I just had to go and pick something. Uh, we have seen this one before, not long ago I showed this, we have one at work. Um, but it was right over there so I thought let's just have a look at it again. This is the HP Polyant and it's the DL580 generation 7. This is a 4 socket CPU server. And this is one of the servers that are designed so you can service most of the server on the front of the server and on the back of the server. Very rarely will you have to open it up, but there is the occasion that you have to. So the CPUs and the RAM is all accessible from the front as is the drives and I have to remember the CD-ROM drive because I always forget to tell you that there's a CD-ROM drive in here. But let's go over the server and see what we got. So here it is and we have the standard thingy here where it tells us the administrator code, a password, serial number and that's on all newer HP servers. It has room for 8 hard drives and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 drives there. And down here, that entire thing is the tray for the RAM and the CPU and it pops out. There's a little handle that goes up and this pops out and you get to it that way. Over here, we have the CD-ROM drive and DVD drive and this is not a rewritable. This is just a DVD-ROM. I'm assuming that it can also run CDs. We have the UID, the little blue thing that you press and then it will light up on the back of the server as well. We have a SID, which is this little panel that pops out and will give you, whoa, there's a lot here, give you a little LED for each of the memory blocks. That's a lot of LEDs right there. So we have power on, we have amp status, we have health status, we have power cap, we have PCU 1, 2, 3, 4. Over here we have CPU link, SPI link, over temp we have four fans we have four cpus one two three four and we have a bloody lot of ram each of these little dots is a block of memory and down here are the memory boards there are eight memory boards in here and each of them has eight blocks it seems so let's pop that in we have leds for the health status that is also on the front we had it here we have it there we have LEDs for four network connections and we have a big beefy power on and off button. Two USB ports, one VGA and release. Let's go around the back. Let's go around the back. This server is rather heavy. Do we have a weight? Uh, might be on the other side. This is equipped with an ILO 3 adapter. So the management. First thing, we have the tool. <laughs> we have this little Tox thing that comes with a lot of HP servers. They have actually stopped. I was doing maintenance on an HP server not long ago and I was missing this. It was not on the, that was a DL380 generation 9. It did not have this Tox thing and I did not have one. I had to postpone what I was doing because of that. On the back, this is um, missing all the power supplies, but there is room for four power supplies here and they are of course redundant and very powerful. So next to that we have room for two 10G connections up here. Port 3 and 4 can be 10G connections. Then we have the UID. If you press the button in front of the server, well it will light up here. Then we have four network connections. One, two, three, four. We have a serial connection, VGA connection, and we have the old PS2 connections. One for the mouse, the green one, and one for the keyboard, purple one. Again, we have the ILO adapter, which was the ILO 3, which it also says right there. Two USB 2 connections, and we're out of connections here. Then we have expansion cards, as long as the eye can see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 expansion cards. Is there room for in here? Um, it's probably not occupied all of it, but we'll see that when we get into the server. 
This server takes four CPUs of the Intel Xeon E7 series. Um, this tray pops out and then there is two connectors on the sides that you have to press in for security reasons. And then this pops out. And we can remove this for a little bit and have this tray sitting there all by itself. This is great for when you have a data center and you have to put in all the RAM because um, with this amount of RAM in the server there is 64 slots of RAM so it can take quite a while to pop in all the RAM so it's actually pretty nice to be able to take this tray out of the data center and go and occupy all the RAM slots I have no idea if there is any RAM in this at all but if not, well, we'll just see the empty slots. It feels very empty. So there are eight boxes like this for RAM, and each of these cartridges has room for eight slots of memory. The server is able to handle a maximum of two terabytes of memory. So in each of these slots, you can put in a 32 gigabyte block. 32 times 64 equals two terabytes of RAM. Um, unfortunately, it's not there. To pop this in, there is an air muffler here. If not all of these are present, you don't really want the air to just piss through there without doing anything. So there is a thing here, this thing that prevents the air from just going through there when this thing is not in. So when you pop it in, you have to remove that first and then pop in the memory cartridge like that. On the other side, we have the CPUs. And these are really big. The server is able to take the Intel Xeon, the 4800 and the 8800 series. And these are rather beefy CPUs that can go up to having 10 cores. So if you had 10, 10, 10, 10, you'll have 40 real cores. And with hyperthreading, you will have 80 logical cores. Um, we could just try and pop one of these out. I don't want to mess with this, but well, it has a beefy cooling block there and it has the CPU down there, which is rather large. We could just remove this and see the CPU. Not going to take it out of there. Just uh, pop this back and, and close this down and pop this back in. And then turn this down and lock it into place. There, that's reasonably easy. There is a lot of connections here. It's, uh, don't damage this. The bank will call if you do that. When you're done with your whatever you did here, you can put this back on and it just pops into place. There, so we can put this big tray back in the server. Just lift it a little bit here, there, and slide it in ever so gently. We don't want to damage all those contacts in there. So, there, yeah. cool. Um, the rest of the server, we need to open it up. So, as most other HP servers, it has a lever up here, which we just pull back and it opens the lid, which is now removable. On the inside, we, as usual, have a lot of explanation about what everything is in the server. So um, it's always a good thing to look at that. And that was upside down. Why didn't you say anything? So uh, yeah. So here is the rest of the server. It has hot pluggable fans right there. So um, that you can, you can open up the server and you can replace a fan on the fly. That's nice. Down here, we can see that this server is missing some of the connectivity here it does not have this board here so all of these pci express ports out here is not usable right now you need to put in another card here that connects with the cpu over there this is one of the ways that hp has been able to make this server a little bit cheaper and it's very reasonable because very 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 often you don't use all that you just pop in a couple of cards and you don't use all of this. So it's not a bad idea to do it like that. 
up here we have the back plane of the hot drives the eight drives and this looks very similar to what i just saw in an hp dl 360 generation 8 this print going from one side to the other side and being about 1u thick so they are reusing technology from a 1u server nice let's turn around and see what's over here over here we have a mess of cables for the rate controller the rate controller is mounted on this system board which is kind of weird it's not on the more system board itself it's kind of a expanding upwards and it takes an SD card right here um, a regular SD card just like the ones that are sitting right here on the shelf so you pop that in um, and it goes that way there and that's for loading your hypervisor on the system if you're using VMware ESXi well that can easily be stored on a little SD card like this and you wouldn't need a hard drive at all better put that back if you're more old school and you want a USB stick instead well they have hidden a couple of USB sticks down there you have you need smaller hands to do that it's um, it's not too easy to get to but it's doable so ESXi installed better put that back otherwise it has four power supplies and these are standard HP power supplies which are available throughout their series over here there it has the two 10G connections going out and there is a little PCI Express port for those there this card is kind of a special daughter board that they installed here if that is pleasant well don't think that you can access the USB connections down there there's a lot of power connections here here we see three of these 10 pin connectors which are able to supply power over here well we actually have a couple of x16 slots where you could put in a graphics card if you have one so that's awesome and we have a couple of small LED things down here that can show numbers uh, if you have an error they will probably pop up down there as well the RAID controller has an expansion card in here it's possible to expand the RAID controller down there and there is kind of a slot for that so if you are not satisfied with the standard RAID controller that is on the system board well there is a uh, possibility of improving on that and we have one expansion here there is another expansion available over there and I really don't know what that is for but it's it's just like the one for the rate controller so this HP server has widely been used for virtualization and bigger system like databases SQL Oracle and sub HANA databases are widely used on this um, it's it's quite an expensive server or at least it was nowadays you can actually often get these really cheap because there just ain't a market for them so if you look them up on eBay or Amazon I will try and see if I can find some good links for them and leave them in the description below but you might just get a really good server to play around with I do not recommend um, you running this at home 24-7 that would drain your wallet right down in the pocket of the power company but it's an awesome server to have sitting around and powering up during the weekend and doing stuff on virtualizing stuff and just having a hell lot of power at your fingertips um, HP is not my favorite brand so I would probably um, also suggest that you go and look into some good old IBM stuff but that's just me world's biggest Lenovo slash IBM fan and um, well I just have to say that don't I but this concludes my series on different servers here at Nordic computers where I've been visiting for the day here in the autumn vacation that we have here in Denmark and I've used one of these days to see this location and do some videos with some of their equipment and I was shown around and showed that to you in the first video from up here um, so thank you very much to Nordic Computers for having me around for the day and uh, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again check me out over at Patreon where you can support me with as little as a dollar a month and that helps a lot for me to get my own equipment to 
show you in deeper details. So have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank you.